Over three years ago, back in 2019, we realized that if we wanted to cruise the Mediterranean without having to rely on very expensive marinas for water, we would need a water maker. The problem is, is that with Spectra water makers starting at $7,000 and even cheaper brands starting at $5,000, we simply did not have the budget to invest in popular off-the-shelf brands. Water makers are fairly simple systems, and here's how they work. Essentially, a water maker is a fancy name for a big filtration system. It filters all the stuff that you do not want to drink out of the water, such as salts and impurities. A water maker does that in two steps. The first one by a regular filtration system, like the one you would find under your sink or in a Brita jug. The second one with a reverse osmosis membrane. Reverse osmosis is the process by which salt water is pushed at very high pressure through a semi-permeable membrane to remove salt and all other kind of nasty stuff that you wouldn't want to drink. Here's how we make it work on a boat. Salt water gets in the boat via a regular through haul, which is first filtered through a seawater strainer that will remove the potential bigger crud that may come in with the seawater, such as seaweed and shark poop. The water then goes through a boost pump to push it to the next part of the system. Next, we have a one-way valve, which will come in handy later in the process, but we'll talk about that more in a moment. For now, our seawater is going to go through a series of two water filters. The first one, a 20 micron filter, which will filter out any particulate bigger than 20 microns, and the second filter, a 5 micron filter, which will filter, you guessed it, anything bigger than 5 microns. At this point, the water is a bit cleaner, but still salty and gross. So now we're going to pump it at very high pressure through our reverse osmosis membrane. First, it will go through a high pressure pump, which will shoot the water into a high pressure hose at 800 PSI. For comparison, our boost pump pumps out water between 2.5 and 4 PSI, so yeah, it's a lot of pressure. Okay, so now we've reached the point at which the magic happens. Our high pressure hose is connected to a high pressure vessel into which our reverse osmosis membrane lives. On the other end of the high pressure vessel, we have the crossroads. This is where fresh water gets separated from all the nasties. On one end, the fresh water comes out, and on the other end, the salty discharge called the brine. By slowly cranking up the control valve, we control the pressure through the membrane until it goes up to between 800 and 1000 PSI. Our fresh water will first go through a flow meter to give us an indication of how much fresh water is being produced. Then, through a TDS monitor, TDS standing for Total Dissolved Solids, which gives a measure of the amount of minerals, salts, metals, and other particulate present in the water. If the TDS shows anything above 1,000 parts per million, it's considered unacceptable as drinking water according to the World Health Organization, and anything under 300 parts per million is considered excellent. So that's what we're aiming for. So that's it. Now we've made fresh water from seawater using parts that you can buy at a hardware store. But our water maker isn't complete yet. In order to preserve the integrity of the membrane, the system needs to be flushed regularly, kind of like a toilet. It's a bad joke. So here's how we do that. First, we connect a timer that is connected to our water tanks. On Polar Seal, we have our timer set to flush our system for 10 minutes every Sunday at 11 a.m. So now you know. Well then, we have our house water go through a charcoal filter to eliminate potential traces of chemicals such as chlorine, which the membrane of the water maker is particularly sensitive to. Then the water goes through a one-way valve which we mentioned earlier and runs through the system that we just described, starting with the 20 and 5 micron filters, the high pressure pump, and the membrane. The purpose of the one-way valve is to protect the house water from potential salt water contamination because, well, it comes from the same place. And that's it. That's exactly how a water maker works. So after a lot of research, I realized a few companies sell water maker kits that are made of parts that you would find in whatever hardware store around for a fraction of the price of an off-the-shelf system like a Spectra or Scheneker. Obviously, you have to assemble the kit yourself, but at the price point and given the incredible advantage that making our own water represents, it's worth it. For us, buying a DIY kit made the math work as we could recoup the cost of having to go to marinas to fill up our water tanks within a season. So in December 2019, we ordered a water maker kit from Seawater Pro. 
Our water maker is a 12 volt, 20 gallon or 60 liter per hour kit that contains all the parts one would need to install a fixed water maker on board. The kit comes with a low pressure and high pressure pump, a reverse osmosis membrane, three pre-filters, all the piping you need and even an auto flush system. Initially, we installed the version without a control panel and I would go into the garage where our water maker is installed and operate it each time we wanted to make water. I did not find this to be any inconvenience and again, at the price point and considering the tremendous value of making water on board, we didn't care. The installation itself went pretty smooth, but I shall warn you, if you intend on installing a water maker on your sailboat, no matter if it's an off the shelf or a DIY kit, set aside a few days for the install, preferably at a dock and prepare for a few showers. It's completely normal. I remember one point when I was tightening one of the fittings and the system was pressurized, which you should never do. Okay, that was a big mistake I made. The thing burst in my face and unfortunately the camera wasn't on because that would have made for some great comedy. <laughs> the hardest part of the installation, honestly, is to figure out where you will install all the different parts. But once you've figured it out, it's surprisingly straightforward. I made a video about the installation. You can check it out in the link above myself on the screen. A year after our initial installation, Seawater Pro added a remote control panel to its product offering, and we chose to install it in the galley, which turned out to be a massive life changer in terms of how easy it would be to operate our water maker. So how does it perform? Well, our water maker produces about 20 gallons or 60 to 70 liters per hour, depending on the temperature and the salinity of the seawater. We typically run it for about one to one and a half hours every other day. It draws 60 to 70 amps with our 12 volt system. However, we try to time water production for when the sun is at its peak. With our solar array pumping in 30 to 50 amps when the sun is at its peak, we normally draw 20 to 30 amps from the battery when the water maker's on. Of course, this depends on the size of the solar setup. We have used it in clean ocean water and extremely dirty lagoon water of St. Martin with great success. However, Sophie has asked me to tell you that you really shouldn't run it excessively in gross water. <laughs> Good tip. Having the capacity to produce our own water on a budget has completely changed our lives as we have gained self-sufficiency enormously. It's also increased the comfort on board by allowing us to take daily showers, even during long ocean crossings with crew, and we were even able to install a small washing machine on board. The washing machine will be the subject of another three year later review, but for now, I just wanted to say how life-changing making water on board has been. But what we love most about our water maker is how convenient it is to maintain or repair when something goes awry. Because we do not have to rely on proprietary parts, as would be the case with an off-the-shelf system, I can find parts in every single hardware store that we visit, even in the most remote places of the world. Which obviously, in the context of our lives, is a great advantage. <laughs> I can buy replacement parts and filters anywhere, and honestly, I haven't had to do a lot of repairs. On a rare occasion, I had some pipes burst, but that was 100% my fault. <laughs> so take this as a friendly reminder that you should always open the seacocks and inlets before turning your water maker on. The repairs have always been very easy as the pipe is really not hard to find. And Mike at Seawater Pro has always been super helpful when I've had any questions. And over the years, I've seen him adjust his product to make it better and more dependable which is pretty cool. But this wouldn't be a real honest review if I didn't tell you about some of the cons of the system. First, it takes more power than a Clark pump, which you find on a lot of off-the-shelf systems. For our part, our electrical system can support our water maker easily, so this really isn't a problem. Next, some people may find the system a bit noisy, but no water maker is silent and it does not run permanently, just a few hours every few days. But in our eyes, the pros largely outweigh the cons, being the system is generally inexpensive compared to a lot of others and makes making water on board affordable. It's easy to get parts everywhere in the world, even in remote parts of the world, which is great for us. Easy to install and troubleshoot, but above all else, it makes great, tasty water. I have thought a couple of times about changing our system to a 220 volt AC system so that I can have two membranes and double our production but I think I'll keep that for Polar Seal number two. And yes, Polar Seal number two will definitely be equipped with another Seawater Pro water maker as we simply find it to be the best value around. 
So my final grade for the Seawater Pro water maker kit is a solid A+, totally recommended, and if you're considering getting one, do it. In the meantime, let us know if you'd like us to review more of our equipment on board, and if you'd like to support the production of these videos directly, consider joining our Patreon page. Until next time, 